So this video goes out to the people that are hurting and want to change. This video is for you. I just want to share a quote with you first. And that quote is, My pain is my flame. The more pain I have felt, the more I can love and understand myself and others. Unquote. And we all know the cliche, the more pain, the more gain. The, there is some truth to that. Pain really can be the fuel you need to create positive changes. If you are suffering from some complicated emotional trauma or being heartbroken or depressed or anything of that nature, today I'm here to tell you that it will get better. I know that it sucks and I feel you. Uh, but if it can get better for me, it can get better for you. And before we move on, I just want to say a few words about love. Love is irrational and it doesn't make any sense. Sometimes love can be hard. Uh, when you love someone and you feel hurt, you try to escape that pain by taking the love away. But the love really is just removed from the mind. You cannot take love away from the heart. Even if your heart is shrouded in darkness right now, there is still love there. And when you're ready to allow that spark to ignite into a full-on fire, everyone will witness your resurrection. Your fire of love will be your blaze of glory. Your love is within you, and your love is eternal, with or without that person you're thinking of. Today I serve as a messenger sharing with you my personal thoughts about suffering, heartbreak, and rebirth, and how in order for something to change part of you has to die to give space to that spiritual rebirth. If you're in a dark place right now, just know that you are not alone and your suffering will not be in vain. Uh, like alchemy, your suffering will transform into hope, peace, love and clarity and a burning desire to create the best life you can live and pain can be a catalyst for all of that to happen. You can choose. I feel your pain, I do. And if you're in the midst of it right now, I know it fucking sucks. If you feel grief in any shape or form, it sucks, I get it. I understand. But I want you to know now that you are not alone and it will get better. Know now, my brothers and sisters, that with each breath, you are regaining your strength, clarity, and the will to be and to evolve into the best version of yourself. Know that right now there are probably more people than you realize going through similar experiences to yours, but unique in their own way. It can be interesting how when you go through some stuff on your own that you access this wellspring of empathy and when you do the suffering in others become more apparent and the suffering in the world becomes clearer to you and it makes you want to make a positive change to be a beacon of light to right your wrongs and at least not add to or amplify the suffering in others so we must be kind because you know, everyone fights their own battle, and I mean everyone. Regardless of how well put together they seem on the outside. So take this chance you have now, in the middle of your suffering, and make this positive change happen. Right now there are so many people in pain, and to stop and think about that from time to time and empathize, it definitely has an impact on us, and I think it can be healthy to remind ourselves from time to time that people have a difficult time with, with their lives and their challenges and their relationships and dealing with their emotions. It's not, it's not easy. It's not easy being human. But we're often sold this fantasy of it's supposed to be like this, that, and the other. It's fucking bullshit. And, and sometimes we just need to seek knowledge and wisdom and insight and guidance so that we can deal with whatever we are facing in our lives and uh, not capitulate or, or, or give up or 
get trapped in some negative patterns or resort to drugs and alcohols and shit like that. It only makes it worse. We need to find the way, the path. And uh, for that to happen, we first have to admit our own our own shortcomings. You know, you have to admit that you have your flaws. And by doing so, then at least you can do something about it. But if you're living in this arrogance that you're so fucking great, then you can never really make any changes because you go around thinking you're fucking perfect and no one is. Like, I've had some really hard lessons with myself. I I had to, like, have this come-to-Jesus moment, you know? And just admit to myself my my fucked up ways and the things I've done and how I hurt other people. And now I'm suffering my own karma because of my own actions and how I've hurt others. And now it's circulated back to me in some way. And, you know, I had to admit to myself and it was it was really hard. You know, it was painful to... You know, tell myself that sometimes you can be an asshole. And maybe you are you have some completely different problems. I'm just sharing my personal thoughts here. But, you know, I had to admit some things about myself and want to make changes in order for it to occur. So that has been a very rejuvenating and healing and cleansing thing for me to have this I'm saying come to Jesus moment in quotation marks here because uh, thinks, I think it's a good analogy when you basically confess your sins that was very um, healing and helpful uh, for me and maybe for my inner child and okay i digress um so let's just uh take a moment now and just uh acknowledge that um we're all going through shit right we all go through heartbreak we all lose someone we all get rejected or you know heartbroken or whatever it is so let's take a moment now uh and connect with uh, the people globally inside of your mind and just see their suffering and acknowledge it that it's there that people are having some pretty rough times in their lives you know let's just acknowledge that and and then we take a deep breath and we say to ourselves you say to yourself i am committed to making positive changes I will make positive changes within myself. A change that diminishes suffering and uplifts that within me and others, which is beautiful and good. Now energetically give the world the compassion, nurturing and love and comfort in this moment that you so much crave yourself in the deepest part of yourself. When you are by yourself, Feel it, see it, see yourself cleansed and your suffering transform into compassion, wisdom, and love and insight. See yourself growing stronger day by day. See yourself radiating with vitality and hope. And if you are in your darkest hour right now, know that the sun will shine upon you once more and you will be with happiness, joy, peace and serenity, friendship, adventure, and love, if you so choose it. And now together collectively, uh, let's say a prayer for healing and serenity. Spirit of healing, aid us in this moment of need. Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. The courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. Spirit of love, remind us always that love is the ultimate answer, the ultimate power 
Speak to and through me and lead me in my steps. Steady my hands and steady my breath. I surrender to the will of my higher self and have faith in that which I cannot see. Unveil the curtains that blind me from seeing the truth. Spirit of love, be with me in all that I do, in all that I say. Help me trust in my intuition and help me learn from the past. I kneel before the grace of love, for it is the greatest power and it can bring you to heaven and transformation. So speak now wisely and think from a place of purity and never forsake yourself again. Remember that love creates bridges and hate burns them down. <sighs> For the last decade of my life, I have felt this calling to help the broken. And maybe it's partly because I am somewhat broken myself, or at least I have been. And my life has been a continuous cycle of spiritual death and rebirth. And maybe you see me as this personal development, positive affirmations, YouTube guy, but there is a lot behind the scenes that are a lot of responsibilities, hopes, dreams, pressure, challenges, and things going on just like in your life. You know, I've been in relationships that have failed and I have been loved and I have been hated like you I have suffered greatly in my life and unfortunately in some instances for me that suffering made me bitter it made me sad angry and closed off and in some cases this caused more pain uh, upon the people I love and care about the most we all have our own individual experiences of successes and failures in our lives so you know we all have our different things in life that we go through and experiences that we have to deal with and lessons we have to learn mentally and spiritual because you see our suffering is always trying to teach us something and the harder we fail to learn and grow the more we're gonna suffer so if you keep repeating your mistakes over and over again and do the stupid shit uh, again and again, you are in for a hellish experience with suffering. We all suffer. We all go through it. And there are so many guys that are like, you want to hide your emotions. You don't want other people to know that you experience anything else but fucking rage and anger. And it's just, it's just, it's just a shitty situation because it's just not true. You have a, a wide, wide range of emotions and uh, you feel a lot more than just anger. But us guys, we tend to, to hide it. And when we suffer, we don't want to ask for help. And uh, for some, it's our downfall that we don't ask for help. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of different kinds of pain in life. You know, pain from death of a loved one, pain from ending a relationship, pain from wounds and trauma from the past, physical pain. But no matter what it is, there's always lessons to be found when we look deeper and it always sucks <laughs> i mean that's just the truth uh, but there are always lessons to be learned when you look deeper into it and uh, particularly when we're being truthful and honest with ourselves being human being human is very complex and that means our challenges also come with great complexity. No one gets everything right all the time. And everyone struggles from time to time. And everyone fucks up once in a while. That's just part of life. That's just what life is all about. You know, when you're a child, you fall down and you get back up. And if you stop getting back up, then you're going to suffer even more. So get back up. Allow yourself to go through it. 
but just know when it's uh, when it's enough just know when to stop and uh, just continuously do stuff on the daily that make you you know heal and recuperate and rejuvenate and cleanse and let go of whatever it is that has been hurting you i know it's hard you know, it's, when you say it like that, it sounds like some fucking easy thing. You know, I know it's not. I know when your heart is pounding and when your fucking tears are like right behind your eyes. Ooh, it's heavy. But making positive changes is really what it's all about. And if you're, if you have the willingness to learn and to look inward instead of pointing outwards to everything and everyone else but yourself, you can start to make some changes in your life. You have to look at yourself, like really, really, really look and admit to yourself what you can do better and where you have some shortcomings and what you did to fuck up that last relationship and how you spoke to that person or how you were arrogant in some situations. You just have to be completely honest with yourself and you know um, people other people will come into your life with their flaws and mistakes that's part of the challenge in navigating yourself you must be very vigilant in self-assessment and in staying true to your core self and to do so we have to put it very very high on the priority list if you truly want to make change there needs to be new routines new things uh, to do and to make sure that the changes you're making solidifies into your mind uh, and builds new pathways in your brain so that you actually change mentally and psychologically. You know, you can't just say, I'm going to change and just expect that now you're fucking reborn. You have to physically step into that change. You have to mentally step into that change. You have to traverse the, the 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 flames traverse the flames you have to traverse the flames and know that it is a possibility and that you can do that and when you truly choose to do that things will get a lot better for you and it may see, seem daunting right now to like do a lot of shit when you're suffering because if you are truly suffering you probably just want to lay in your bed and it's hard to get up in the morning and shit like that but there's a voice inside you that just says to you get the fuck up <laughs> and you cultivate that voice within you and just listen to that voice because that voice speaks from a place of strength and self-belief and if you can hear that voice right now or that voice is weak then amplify it and turn up the volume and just say to yourself get the fuck up i know it's hard i acknowledge that it's hard i acknowledge this pain it's horrible but you have to just get up and when you do you start getting like momentum in your life like you suddenly have one good day and one good day turns into a good week and a good week turns into a good month and now you're on a roll you've st you 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 recreate yourself all right you can do it i have faith in you i know you can do it and pain even though it sucks, it's the best catalyst for making those changes. All right, you can do it. And I'm here with you. You know, sometimes, sometimes the things that are hard to do is the right thing to do and it will make you feel better. And those things that are hard to do becomes more it becomes easier. It's just like if you've never done push-ups and you start doing them, it's gonna suck in the beginning. <laughs> but eventually, you're gonna fly when you're doing those push-ups. And the same applies to other things in life that are hard to do, like getting out of grief and doing what's necessary. 
I thought I'd share with you my personal motivation for wanting to better myself. And uh, this is very personal. I haven't really said this to anyone. Maybe I said this to one person that I really care about. I hate the part of myself that is arrogant and selfish, entitled and domineering. In my heart and in my soul, I'm an extremely loving person. I might give off another impression with my parents, my tattoos and all that shit, but I have a big heart. I love with all of my being. I want to be a man of virtue, wisdom and strength. To love and to be loved. I want to make sure that the next time I get into a romantic relationship with someone that I do things right and that I own up to my flaws and mistakes with strength and integrity and that I act in accordance to my values and principles at all times, that I take this all more seriously and do better in the future. So for me to admit those things for myself has been completely liberating and transformational. Because if I didn't, I would have just continued with the same shit that I've always done. And I know that it's not sustainable to do that. The point in all of this is to convey to you that your suffering can give you the need and the desire to make positive, lasting changes in your life. And this opportunity should never be wasted, uh, regardless of your individual situation or how horrible it is. We must seek meaning and purpose. And when you figure out that your suffering now is also a gateway to your higher self, you must build a bridge that fills the gap between you and your higher self. Your higher self is, is your higher self is the purest, most sacred part of you. So you know, in life, we all we all fail. It sucks when you fail in a significant way, uh, but it's just a universal mechanism for learning. It's just. It's in all animals, in all humans, in all life. So remember always that your suffering never has to be in vain if you choose to learn from it. It can give birth to something amazing in your life. If you choose to take that path, I've come, I, I've learned that if you don't really learn your lessons from bad situations, it will keep coming back to you until you finally solve the puzzle. Until you finally solve the puzzle and realize that the changes you seek needs to happen on the inside. And you, and, and finally, you do what is necessary. And sometimes... There's a whole lot of change that needs to be done, but if an addict can recover and live sober, then behavioral change certainly is very possible and likely for those that really, really want it. Definitely. So you can change, it just depends how much you want to change. Okay, how important is it to you? It's really tough to sit down and admit your own flaws and your mistakes to yourself. And not only that, but to really, really reflect and think deeply about it. Not for five minutes, but for a long ass time, you know. But when you do so, just know that the truth shall set you free. Even if you don't believe in confession, confess to yourself. Confess to God or whatever you believe in. The truth shall set you free. Um, and I've come to realize that if you don't have that talk with yourself and don't admit your flaws and wrongdoings to yourself, then how can you ever make a change? Change happens on the inside first. Don't look for the change on the outside. Don't try, try to change the outside. Change the inside. Uh, we manifest things all the time. Every thought is a frequency and a thought repeated consciously or unconsciously will affect our lives even if we cannot see a direct correlation with our 
conscious perception. For example, if a relationship comes to a screaming halt, then it turns into coldness, harshness, bitterness, resentment. It's oft, it often stems from what we have been go, what have been going on in our minds over a prolonged period of time, combined with how, of course, how we communicate. So what goes on in our mind determines how you act, how you respond, how you show up for others, how kind you are, how successful you are, and how loving you are. It all stems from your thoughts and your belief systems. So if you cultivate a place in your mind where your thoughts are very pure, very powerful, strong, loving, gracious, nurturing, then what happens on the outside in your life will change definitely. So you have to just realize also that if you're, for example, every day consuming social media garbage, it certainly and definitely will affect you even though you don't notice the gradual change in your behavior. Even if you don't believe in a traditional god or god in any way that other people have described it like a man in the clouds or some insane stories like that that's okay i'm not asking you to believe in that at all i would i'm not i'm not like advertising for any religion here at all i don't even follow a religion myself at least not a specific one but i'm asking you to be open to the possibility of a higher power there is absolutely nothing to lose by being open to that, okay? You want to heal? I, all right, so you be open to that. I have never been a religious person, but in the last few years, God has slowly but surely become part of my life. And today I love God. I believe in God. The God I believe in cannot be defined by words. One can only try. Words are not powerful enough to convey God, so I won't even begin to try. If you ask God to save you and you let him, he will flow through you. He will reveal himself to you and your suffering will no longer be in vain. It's not going to vanish, but it's going to help you. He will show you the way if you ask him. He wants you to learn something invaluable from your experiences. He sees you differently than everyone sees you. God sees the potential in you, the kindness in you, the love in you, the child in you. This talk was never meant to take a religious turn, but a spiritual direction. Whatever that is to you, religious or not, uh, when you surrender yourself to a higher power, the universe starts making a path for you to follow. We all go through life having to face some extremely difficult periods of our lives. Uh, life-defining moments that will shape the future forward and have lasting impact. And I want you to go out there now and grow. Go through whatever it is you have to face. Cry and weep if you have to. Fall to your knees if you must. Just make sure to know when to stop yourself from going overboard. Knowing that we can improve that we are the creators, we can improve, we can make things better, we can learn from our mistakes. You know, maybe you don't ever have to feel the heartbreak you're feeling right now ever again. If you make the changes that are required from you, not if you find that person or you do that thing or blah, 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 that's bullshit. You have to do it inside yourself. And, yeah, there is always light in the end of the tunnel. And I trust that you will get there. I have faith in you. I see you. I feel your pain. You are not alone, brother, sister. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me ramble on about this. It uh, took more of a personal turn than I would have anticipated, but I am learning to open myself more up and show the more vulnerable parts of myself, share a little bit of my human experience with you. And I hope this has given you comfort and hope 
and that you can look forward now with a little bit more hope in your heart. I'm just going to remind you once more that it will get better. And I see you. I believe in you. If you would like to see more of me in the future, then you can subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below and share your thoughts or your own experiences. This is um, probably going to be the first video I ever publish. So I would very much uh, like it to hear from you in the comments. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you later. Take care of yourself. Peace.